Uh, now I would like to welcome our second speaker for this session, uh, Caroline Sauer. Uh, Caroline is a postdoctoral research fellow at uh, the Cancer Genomics Group, led by Dr. Cortez Ceriano at EMBL. So, Caroline. Thank you, Olivier, and thank you to the entire Nanopore team for having me here today. Um, so, for the purpose of this session, I'm going to focus on pediatric cancers uh, and why we think nanopore sequencing of cell-free DNA in pediatric cancers is particularly beneficial. And this is because pediatric cancers are the leading cause of death in the Western world, in, in children or post-infancy. Um, and we know that uh, children, particularly with solid tumors, have very poor outcome and very high relapse rates. Um, however, from genomic studies, we now know that quite a large proportion of pediatric cancer patients have actionable alterations that we might be able to target in the clinic. Um, the key challenge here is to obtain sufficient tumor tissue or material to perform genomic tumor profiling. Um, Surgeries in young children or toddlers is not very straightforward, and even biopsies are not very trivial. So this is where the promise of liquid biopsies come in that I hopefully don't need to introduce you to. Um, so our main research question is, can we use long read nanopore sequencing to develop multimodal liquid biopsy tests for children with cancer to screen their cancer types and monitor their disease progression? Um, and here's the study overview that we're using. So we're part of the Stratified Medicine Pediatrics Study, which is a UK-wide um, trial or study in which we collect samples, tumor and liquid biopsy samples, from children with solid tumors that relapsed. And we then perform nanopore sequencing as well as illumina sequencing for validation purposes. And our group in particular is very interested in developing computational tools to then analyze the data, looking at a copy number, looking at fragmentomics, looking at methylation. There's a very exciting talk tomorrow by my colleague Hilary talking about her somatic SV caller. Um, and we're also very interested in looking at the methylation signal, as Billy already laid out. This is something that's very exciting, in particular for cell for DNA um, analyses. So we want to use the methylation signal to more accurately predict tumor burden, but also perform disease classification um, analyses. And lastly, we want to integrate all this data to have a nice and accurate way to monitor disease progression and um, treatment response in children with, with cancers and also predict relapse a little earlier. So this is the sort of longitudinal aspect of our work. Um, and just to give you a brief flavor of the three aspects I've just mentioned here, I'm just showing you the very typical self DNA fragmentation size profile that we do get from our nanopore sequencing reads. So you can see mononucleosomal, denucleosomal, and trinucleosomal uh, DNA, but we also get ultra-long cell free DNA fragments, which are quite interesting. We do detect um, highly accurate copy number profiles. Here I'm showing an example uh, where we detected clinically relevant focal amplification <coughs> in ALK and MIC-N. Um, we do look at methylation deconvolution and find that our estimates from the methylation signals strongly correlate with our tumor fractions, and also that cell free DNA samples from different tumor types uh, cluster separately. So you can use the methylation signal to differentiate between different tumor types. Uh, and lastly, here's just one example from new, one neuroblastoma patient where we had five um, samples that were longitudinally collected. And you can see that the tumor fraction alters over time uh, before surgery, during or after chemotherapy, uh, and also at relapse with additional copy number events detected towards the end. But I'll finish with thanking all my collaborators, clinical collaborators, um, all the patients participating in the study, and also in particular Andrew and his team, Nick and Joe, who are right there, um, who are doing all the sequencing for us. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you. Well done. Thank you, Caroline. A really beautiful example of the value of Nanopore and how you can integrate multiple parameters uh, just into one assay, uh, one platform.